Hey Aquarius, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So I'm going to use the Renaissance Tarot for you today. It's an interesting little deck that I've been having a lot of fun learning and, and trying to figure out kind of the ecosystem in, in which these energies kind of exist. I am pulling in this energy that something, someone, something's got you annoyed, Aquarius. Something feels like it's pushing on your boundaries. It's you feel a little protective and you feel a little irritated i'm not gonna lie we are coming up on a full moon so so sometimes that happens yes but i'm sitting at my desk and i'm noticing that there's pollen flying in through my window now spring is here right what is what is pollen pollen is fertility pollen is how we have new growth right but pollen can also be like kind of like an irritant as well right you get allergies it's an allergen um make you feel kind of inflamed it's, it's like this expansion sort of thing right and it really got me thinking about all of the other times in our life where we go through periods of um like rapid or significant growth right think about puberty puberty you were growing into kind of your your form right but it's very painful it's really uncomfortable right I remember going through puberty and like crying because like my body hurts so much and I think the same thing happens to us internally emotionally and spiritually that when we're going through periods of significant change or transition or growth in and of itself um there is an energy where we can feel a little bit protective of ourselves because we are uncomfortable and as you're going through this transition right now like a lot of things are changing for you it feels that you're just trying to kind of hold on to your new growth um keep this new season like very wholesome but it feels like there are allergens or there are irritants around you and it particularly it feels like it has to do with some people it feels like there are some people popping up there are some people around you that are really all of a sudden rubbing you the wrong way now it gives me the impression of like when you wake up and you just don't like something anymore and you can't really explain why or what that is. I just went through this like a month or so ago and I went through a big ascension, like a big activation again and I was integrating all of these energies and I noticed for me like foods... I'm a big foodie, so it's like the foods that I, like I love, like the foods that were always my comfort foods, things that I always liked. All of a sudden, I woke up one morning and I was like, "Oh, like I don't want to look at another dumpling." Like it's just, it was a strange thing. But I'm wondering if like you were going through that a little bit with people. Like all of a sudden, you just wake up and you're just seeing people a different way, or someone in particular, and you're like, "Something's not right there." I don't. We're not vibing anymore. It's almost it's just like this immediate. These people or this situation or some of these energies, they are not in alignment with my growth. And, and part of the reason I say that is because you have temperance at the bottom of the deck. In this deck, temperance is Susan B. Anthony. Um, and you see her like dumping out this bottle of like liquor or whiskey, right? And it's the whole idea of prohibition. Now, prohibition was really kind of like a radical way to approach like the the overconsumption of alcohol in society at that time just to completely take it off the shelves period it was radical but sometimes like we have to kind of take or make radical moves or radical decisions set boundaries pour some stuff out in order for us to kind of have a clean slate in order for us to regain our footing or, or bring kind of harmony back in back into our lives and so i think it might be an energy that overtakes you. You might not really be able to describe it or explain why it's happening, but it's just this feeling of I am in something new and those things, those people, that stuff, like it's not for me anymore. It feels like really matter of fact. It feels like really stern. It might even be kind of like a radical shift for you um, in your life or the way that you're feeling, but it, there's something about it that it feels like it's necessary, almost as if you had like been getting some of these signs for a while and you weren't really picking up on it, right? Um, and then all of a sudden it just clicks and you go, clean house, clean house, <laughs> everybody off the boat. Like it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray. You had that, um, that ain't no man song too but what is it like the avra brothers ain't no man can save me ain't no man can enslave me ain't no man oh man that can change the shape my soul is in like there there is something about that not wanting to be bound right oh now you're showing me that song bound by the floor what is it local age no you just don't get it you say it's but but you know what i'll put i'll link them in the i'll link them in the cards for you after this 
But let's pray and we'll see kind of what else wants to come out here. Father God, thank you for bringing me and my Aquarians in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aquarius's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Aquarius. So you have the Six of Swords. You have the Discovery card coming up next. This seems to be a bit of a challenge for you. Now, when I'm looking at this Temperance, this Prohibition card, it talks a lot about excess and it talks a lot about bad habits. There may be some, some people or some places, some things around you that really encourage like your own bad habits. We are like sponges as people. We do take on a lot from our environment, right? And so if you've been like working really, really hard towards adventure or to kind of break through into a new chapter in your life, all of a sudden, um, any of the habits, the behaviors, or again, even people around you that may enable those aspects within you. And again, that's your responsibility. It's not theirs, but you know, it's hard to heal in a place you got sick kind of thing, right? That might be um, coming up right now. That might be triggering a response out of you. That's part of this clearance sale. Like everything must go because it's a feeling of I'm so close to boarding this boat. Like I'm so close to finding balance in my life that any of these bad habits, any people that I don't resonate with that I just keep around so I'm not lonely, any of that stuff, it just feels like it's a radical decision for you to go, nope, I'm not doing it. We're changing things up. That's it, right? King of Swords. It feels like you it feels like you got some information. That's what it feels like. Feels like you got some information that previously like you were not privy to. Perhaps because you were so much like within your own internal process that spirit was intentionally keeping some information from you so that way you could stay focused on what it is that you were doing, what you were supposed to be focusing on, but it feels like you crossed that threshold and now that you have it's, I'm hearing buyer's remorse. Now that you have some information about some stuff that has already occurred, seems to be coming to light for you. And, and that might be part of this clearance thing that there were some um, behaviors or some energy, some people, right? Some stuff that you had originally intended to take with you because they appeared as if they were pollinating or growing alongside with you. But now it is becoming obvious whether it's through a download, some kind of eureka moment, or again, just the way you're perceiving things is different. It's becoming obvious that the things that originally you thought were pollinators are actually allergens. And you, and part of this, it's a hard balance because we have to take into consideration defense mechanisms, ego, the shadow, all of that kind of stuff. I know for me, right, and this is a me thing, you may or may not resonate with it. I know that sometimes if I get really irritated out of nowhere, it's a sign for me that there's something, there's someone, there's an energy around me that is not in alignment with who I am and what I'm trying to do. And so it's almost like before it clicks in my head mentally, my body will react to that allergen. My body will react to an energy that is not in alignment. And usually it reacts through like defensiveness or anger or like, whoa, you know what I mean? It's like the fires get turned on real quick. And then I go to my head and I go, oh, that's what, that's what that is. And the fires simmer down and I can make a decision from that point. So I'm just wondering if there's something similar that you were going through that like your body, your instincts, your perception, like all of a sudden it's like, whoa, I don't like that. Whoa, that's not going to work for me. Whoa, I didn't notice that about that person before. It just comes in, right? And so all of a sudden it's like before you get on this ship, you have to do like this mad dash to start pruning um, or to start kind of picking some things out that previously like you hadn't noticed in the past. The ace of coins is coming out. And so again, there seems to be like this opportunity. Now, like the, the phrase like once in a lifetime is is coming forward. I don't ever take phrases like that literally, right? Because we live so many lifetimes, like stuff comes back around, you know, but it just feels like an opportunity that's like, it's too good to miss. And it's like, it's right in your hand. That's the thing. It's like, you already have this. It's not like it's being dropped from like, the heavens and you're kind of waiting for it to descend upon you it's like you've already been given kind of like the golden ticket you've already been 
told like what it is you're supposed to be doing or where it is that you're going you've probably had especially with this king of swords like a lot of visions you've had a lot of dreams it's like you've had a lot of confirmations and now it's right in your hand you have the ticket like you are ready to board but again it's just this mad dash to get rid of whatever had snuck on board with you four of swords yeah see so in in this deck the four of swords it's so funny um it talks a lot about the environment it talks a lot about like it's funny but it's like smoke like air particles like secondhand smoke again like pollen in the air dust in the air it's like it's these irritants this four of swords really tries to highlight ways in which we may become dragged down weighed down energetically emotionally depleted because of the environments that we're in and again listen we can't control the world we can't control other people and what they do but like we can take ownership um, and feel empowered in what we can do and how we can change our circumstances, take ourselves out of certain environments. And again, this might be something that you previously hadn't noticed before. You might have said, oh, like, I'm just tired. It's the full moon. It's, you know, it's the solar flares. It's the this, it's the that, right? It's like, and I actually think it's good to go down that checklist before we start like pointing fingers at a particular person or an environment. I think it's good to kind of go through the list and, and really start checking off magical and mundane things that could be the cause for a shift in mood or why you feel differently, why you're seeing things differently. Just all of that stuff. I think it's a responsible thing to do. And it feels like you've kind of already gone through that checklist and it's like you're kind of left with like one common denominator and it might just be again the environments that you've been in um, or some of the people that are around or even some of like the media like stuff that you're just energetically emotionally absorbing around you it is part of the depletion it, it is part of the problem at one point maybe you thought oh that, this is the solution but it feels like and maybe it was, but it feels like now it's part of the problem. And you're recognizing that for the first time in perhaps a very long time. I do see the Queen of Swords coming forward. So one, I do like that these are coming out in a pair. Because it is saying that the kind of passive intuitive side and your kind of more action oriented aspect of your brain, right, of, of your intellect are working together. It's like all, and I think that's part of the big whoop. It's like everything comes online for you, everything clicks, and it's like all systems are working together as they should be. This Queen of Swords, she also has these scales. She has a letter opener and, and she has these scales. And I did just say like, it felt like you had pulled in some kind of information, right? That just previously like you weren't privy to. But these scales, it's like, it feels like you have to make like really quick judgment calls. It's like there's the ship is departing. There's not a lot of time to waste, right? And every piece of baggage that you put on that ship, it does add to the weight of the vessel. And if the vessel is heavier, it moves slower. And so part of this is you wanting to move very light. Going back to this prohibition thing too, it's clarity, right? It's like when you drink too much and you get a little fuzzy, it's that sort of thing. There's something about you wanting to move forward very clear or you coming out of the fog, um, you seeing things clearly. What's that song? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Um, some, some of you are asking me, how do I know if it's the environment or how do I know if it's these people? Well, uh, I would say notice how you feel when you're not around those people and those environments when you're kind of where you're supposed to be or when you're with um people or in places that are um equal that are in alignment with you you'll find that they you'll feel more energized after you get out of those conversations or out of those places or at the very least like the impact of that experience or those conversations will be neutral if you find yourself leaving conversations and you feel really depleted, that's a sign that like those people, you, you just might not be on the same frequency. And sometimes it's not a good or a bad thing. It, it's just a different type of thing, right? If you're not sure, 
Well, spend a couple of days away from those people or that environment and see how you feel. Do you feel better? Well, if you feel better, then that might be a sign that yes, like there's something about that situation, that place or those people that are draining to you. And so it feels like you have to make like these really quick decisions. There's something about contracts that's also coming through with these Queen of Swords. Like you might have previously agreed to do some things with some people, work on some plans, projects, whatever it is. And really quickly, you might just have this really strong instinct that all of a sudden, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. That's not the best decision for you, right? Um, and so some of you might have to try and see if you can kind of finagle your way out of some of these contracts or agreements, whether they're like on a high or a legal level or whether they were just verbal agreements. Yeah, we'll go do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something, there's something about that that you might have to kind of like renege on a few agreements, obligations, plans that previously had got set into motion. That's part of the feeling of it being really kind of radical. Six of Wands. See, so this this six of wands, as as we know, it's Leo Jupiter energy, it's expansion, success, recognition. This six of wands, though, is is kind of a wild thing. So you see this tombstone right here. The story about this six of wands is that this woman was in a relationship that was unhealthy. It was a relationship that she really shouldn't have been in. Um, but at the time, she was so overcome by excess. She was so overcome by her passions, right? Um, that just that connection, that attachment to that person that she didn't have any mobility. She didn't have room to move. And eventually, like, there were a lot of really unfortunate things that she had to go through. Yes. Um, and what this six of wands here is, is that those, that person had, had transitioned, they had passed. And so she was free of these attachments. She was free of those things. She was free of those people, those situations. And thus she is celebrating the fact that she's free now to start a new life to, she ends up finding someone else getting married to someone else, having like a really gorgeous life, right? But again, there's something that was kind of radical that had to happen in order to separate her from what was toxic or what was unhealthy or codependent, what was weighing her down or holding her back. I don't think that like anything as dramatic as death and misfortune is going to happen here. I think they're just really trying to highlight that it's like an aspect of divine intervention I think the divine intervention for you, Aquarius, is just coming in with the piece of information or the revelation. Again, those dots clicking for you. Of, oh, that's what it is. That's what they've been trying to tell me. That's what I wasn't getting. Absolutely, yes. Like, I cannot do that anymore. I have to create some changes. But it feels like the radical thing about it is not what the divine does because they're just bringing you in truth and clarity. The radical thing is how you're responding to it. You overall, like you are a pretty balanced energy, you know what I mean? I don't see Aquarians as being particularly impulsive people. You're you're an air sign. You tend to you tend to look before you leap. You think before you speak. But again, something just clicks off in you and then you make a radical decision, a radical departure, a radical severance. It there is something about that. Again, prohibition that you had to make a radical sweep in order to maintain or protect like your new spring your new season um even this level of wholesomeness that you have come into five of coins mm. this can even be like with mindsets or certain groups or communities that you're a part of so when we're looking at this five of coins we see like one white dude at the top of this mountain and he's preaching to all of these people down here and it's this idea the five of cups talks about loss right and here it really talks about a loss of community it talks about a loss of culture it talks about a loss of history um it talks a, about a law a, a loss that is bigger than money a loss of self a loss of agency and how sometimes we don't realize that there can be one person there can be one voice that elevates itself and it speaks over us and it tells us what we should or should not be doing it tries to erase our history it tries to erase our culture it tries to steal these deep knowings that we have inside from us and part of this queen of swords is that radical shift you know in many ways susan b anthony she she was kind of a political radical 
um, at the time, right, with women's suffrage and, and prohibition and, and all of that kind of stuff, right? And she had her own flaws, but still, um, she didn't let anyone speak over her. She reclaimed that for herself. And so in, in some ways, this may be what is going on in the environment, Aquarius, that there just may be, again, people, places, and things that are elevating themselves as being like, um, they, they know it all. They know it all. And you may have gone along with that for a long time, only to wake up one day and go, this person's full of shit. This person has no idea what they're talking about. You may have even, with that contract thing, you may have even like signed up for like some of their stuff. You know what I mean? It's like you drunk some of their Kool-Aid and then one day you realize that Kool-Aid has arsenic in it. I'm taking off these Nikes and I'm getting out of Dodge. And that's radical for you because you already seemed engrossed in these projects or in these relationships or in this stuff. And then all of a sudden you go, no more. You can't touch. You can't touch this. I have to go. We have to go. anything else oh that was fast that's fast it's, it's, the, it's the knight of wands it's a fast car with a fast character right here yeah there is this big energy of like reclamation coming in reclaiming your power reclaiming your ability to say no also there's something coming in about your ability to notice that something is wrong or off without gaslighting yourself into thinking it's just your ego it's the idea of like playing devil's advocate too much Aquarius. It's like you look at something and it just feels wrong. Like you just don't like it. But then you, you talk yourself out of it. You go, well, it's just my ego. It's just my shadow. Maybe I'm jealous. Like, you know, maybe I have to, I have to hold space for other people's opinions. Like maybe they know it's like all of this, but well, maybe, huh? And meanwhile, it doesn't change the fact that whatever's going on around you or whatever you're now kind of seeing very clearly in the environment or with some people, it just rings to you as wrong. And that instinct, it doesn't need an explanation. It doesn't need a lot of proof, right? And so I think that moving forward, I think that your instincts are gonna start moving real quickly. They're gonna come in, they're going to come in a lot faster, they're going to come in a lot clearer, they're going to come in a lot stronger. And I think moving forward, you're not going to talk yourself out of what your basic instincts are telling you. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Because again, to reiterate from earlier, it just feels like there were Easter eggs for this. Again, this is not the right group for you. The way this is going on is not the right thing for you, right? But you were just kind of, ah, oh, well, what do I know? It's that sort of thing. You know a lot more than you're giving yourself credit for. And I think that for you, you have this uh, an energy that's very pragmatic right now. It's like, I could have saved myself some time, um, some effort. I, I wouldn't have to be at the last moment in this mad dash trying to untie myself from people, places, and things, mindsets, groups, just shit, right? That does is not for me. That's not supposed to be going where I am going. That's not the right direction. It just feels like you're doing a little bit of scrambling right now. Like, again, it's, uh, it's like when you don't expect company to come over. <laughs> there's like I'm right down the street and so you're just running around the house trying to wipe down the counters right it's like but had you listened to your instinct that, that had said I think someone's gonna stop by today you'd already be ready I think that's kind of what it is so moving forward I think when these instincts come up for you I don't think you're gonna talk yourself out of them I don't think you're gonna gaslight yourself into saying oh it's ego and I'm being judgmental I think you're just gonna go that doesn't feel right and so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to participate in that. I do not receive that, right? And that leaves you light. That leaves you in alignment with yourself. That allows you to respect and trust the connection and the messages that are coming in for you. And just like this missionary of wands, you're going to be able to move a lot quicker, like lightning, because you're not going to be weighed down by all of this other stuff. And the last card in your spread, the priestess. So, you know, it's not our normal reading Aquarius, but it's also not wrong. It's also not wrong. This is Emily Dickinson. And kind of the moral of her story is she, you know, she wrote about a lot of things that she didn't see in person. But she didn't have to. She didn't have to see how all of those situations, those personalities, how those scenes played out. Because she just knew it. She knew it through her instinct, how that felt what was going on it's incredibly intuitive you read all of her poetry it's basically it's like it's channeled half of it 
And that's the thing that you don't have to see it to see it. Oh, oh, I was just called you. Oh, I just called you Sagittarius. That's interesting. You don't have to, you take that for what you will. You don't have to see it to know it, right? Um, and sometimes it's better not to let life prove it to you or let people prove your first instinct about it to you. And so again, I think moving forward, you're going to trust your instincts. I think you're going to honor the messages that come forward from the divine a lot quicker. Um, and I think that's going to allow you to move through this next season um, much faster because you're not going to be so way down. You're not going to be doubting yourself um, and the guidance that comes in for you. You're not going to get it confused or convoluted. So all in all, it's really good stuff. You still have this this ace in your hand, you are still moving forward. You're making a couple radical shifts and you're having a few personal revelations, but all in all, it's stuff that had to get, had to get cleaned out anyway. So it's all in a day's work, Aquarius, all in a day's work. So this is what I have for you. I am going to go do an extended reading. If you're interested in your extended reading or your monthly reading for March, those links will be in the description box for you. Um, if you're interested in a personal reading or intuitive coaching, you can book with me through my website. And I always encourage you guys to check out Patreon for all of the extendeds, all of the monthlies and our mystery school. I love you so much. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.